Welcome to the City of Gresham's annual Groundwater Protection Program Training. I'm Clay Walker, Senior Environmental Specialist at the City of Gresham. I manage our Groundwater Protection Program. If you operate a business that stores, uses, or transports chemicals, our program is designed to ensure you understand what chemicals are regulated, what safety systems are required, and how to comply with the Groundwater Protection Program regulations. In this video, you'll learn about our protection areas and how you can successfully prevent pollutants from impacting our local drinking water supply. In this training, we cover six key program areas. We will review the groundwater protection areas, determine whether or not your business is subject to regulation, review program compliance, cover best practices, review spill response, and lastly, we'll walk you through training and support Let's get started. The City of Gresham partners with Rockwood Water, the City of Portland, and the City of Fairview to protect groundwater and prevent contamination. Gresham sits on top of a large aquifer that is a source of drinking water for Portland, Gresham, Fairview, Troutdale, and Rockwood Water. Gresham's primary source of water will be groundwater by 2026. There are three well fields, the Cascade Well Field, the Columbia South Shore well field, and the Cascade well field expansion area. Potential threats to groundwater include uncontained chemicals of a hazardous nature, spills of industrial or household hazardous wastes, and inappropriate application or disposal of farm, garden, or various household chemicals. Regulation is determined by the type and volume of chemicals stored. Such chemicals might be typically found in your chemical storage areas, loading and unloading areas such as docks, intrasite transfer areas, and along the transportation routes on and off your site, as well as at fuel dispensing areas. Businesses that store any combination of chemicals over the listed thresholds in the following categories are regulated under the Groundwater Protection Program. Those chemicals are halogenated solvents at 10 gallons, hazardous wastes at 30 gallons, hazardous substances at 50 gallons, and fuel to petroleum product types at 50 gallons. Businesses that are regulated are required to properly manage chemicals in areas where they are used, stored, loaded and unloaded, or transported to and from the site. Many areas of the city have been part of the Groundwater Protection Program for years and other areas are just being added as we expand our reliance on groundwater. To make it easier for businesses that may be regulated under the new program, we have phased in the requirements. Phase one requires you to form your spill team and create a spill plan, place spill equipment and supplies, obtain the annual training, and submit your annual report and site plan. Phase two covers the requirements to place minor secondary containment systems that are non-structural in nature and to utilize the operational best practices that I will cover in the next few slides. Phases three and four are set to allow businesses enough time to place major structural items required to be compliant with the program regulations. While there are structural changes that can be made to help contain spills and prevent them from leaving the site, the following operational best practices are the key to protecting our groundwater supply. A pollution prevention team is a group of staff who are trained to inspect your chemical use and storage areas. To make sure the best practices are in place to prevent spills from happening and to capture or contain any spill. As well as ensure that spill kits are stocked up and ready to deploy in case a spill occurs. Your goal should be to make sure that your staff are trained to prevent spills and in the case of a spill, know who to contact and how to respond to that spill. Good housekeeping practices include everything from proper storage and handling of chemicals to ensuring that any spill gets cleaned up promptly and that you follow through with reporting. Should a spill occur, it is critical that you or someone on your site spill prevention team knows where to find the safety data sheets for chemicals used at your work site. 
as well as how to read and understand the information in the safety data sheets. These safety data sheets provide critical information about a chemical's risk to you and the environment, including any health risks, flammability, reactivity, or caustic reaction between those chemicals and other chemicals that you work with, as well as the personal protective equipment you should wear before cleaning the spill up. Be sure to consult with your spill prevention team leader and or the safety data sheets before attempting to clean up chemicals you don't know anything about. Oregon state law requires that safety data sheets be in a centralized, accessible location that everyone knows how to find, and that staff who handle hazardous substances have a basic understanding of the information they contain. Preventing spills is everyone's goal, but sometimes things happen. Even with spill containment pallets and proper floor coatings, spills that do occur need to be cleaned up immediately. Larger spills require immediate action to ensure they are contained. For example, a spill that occurs while unloading a truck might require a valve to be turned or a spill mat to be placed over a catch basin. Or there may be one or more spill kits that have absorbent booms, a spreadable absorbent that needs to be placed, or other items that can be used to contain the spill. Whether it is the role of the spill team or something everyone is trained on, every site needs to have a spill plan in place for preventing, containing, and cleaning up spills. A site plan detailing where chemicals are used, stored, and transported is required for all regulated facilities. The spill prevention plan is a critical piece to help you understand where spill containment measures are stored. It is the duty of one or more members of the spill prevention team to regularly inspect spill kits to ensure they are properly stocked and that products are being properly stored to contain spills or drips. Each year, an inventory of chemicals used on site and their quantities must be reported to the online database hosted by the City of Portland. Some companies can decrease their risk or even remove themselves from the program requirements by changing the chemicals they routinely use. Another method is to reduce the amount of chemical they keep on site, thereby reducing their storage and use below the regulated chemical thresholds. Other businesses might be able to replace the hazardous chemicals they currently use with a safer alternative. If this is something you are interested in learning more about, the city and our partners can help you evaluate chemicals you currently use. This next slide summarizes the five key requirements to comply with the Groundwater Protection Program. Submit your annual report. Submit your annual site plan. Obtain the annual well field training for your staff. Update your spill plan and team documents. Meet the well field manual storage, transport, and use regulations. Should a spill ever occur, the key things to keep in mind are Follow your site's approved spill plan to contain the spill and prevent it from escaping the building or storage area. Use spill kits, drain covers, booms, or other materials your spill prevention team has trained you to use and told you where to find. Make sure that you or your spill team leader consult the safety data sheets prior to any spill cleanups. Know who to call and report any spill that does occur. That was a lot of information. Many of the required program elements I mentioned are things the city can help with. In addition to this online training that can be taken annually, we also offer on-site training and materials such as spill kits, spill mats, and storage pallets. We're here to help, so please think of us as a resource to help keep our drinking water safe. If you have any questions, Please contact us at any time using the information on your screen. Now that you've completed the training, the last step is to fill out the form located on the groundwater protection page to document you've done your part. And thank you for your attention and for partnering with us to protect our drinking water supply.